We've done a lot of trapping videos in the past and some of the stuff we get fairly technical with um, as far as setting the traps and exact t techniques on what we look for when we're in the field. But I kind of wanted to simplify it and not necessarily dumb it down, but basically create a short list or say the 10 commandments of trapping. These 10 things are the foundation of catching more coyotes. One of the first things that you need to do before you start trapping is set a goal. Whether your goal is fur trapping, say in the Midwest in the wintertime, and you're there to collect furs to make money. On the flip side of that, and what we do is wildlife management. And our goal basically is to increase the deer and turkey numbers on a set piece of property. Specifically, we're coming in at this time of year. We're right here, right before the start of turkey season. We want more poult numbers. So we're gonna hit the nest predators really hard. While we're here, we're gonna hit the coyotes as well because we've got some really good weather and they're gonna be moving as well. I think one of the main reasons why um, people are not successful when trapping coyotes is, you know, they don't, they're not running the right tools or they don't have the feel for the tools that they have. One of the tools that I rely heavily on is screen wire pan covers. And, you know, not everybody wants to use them. I love them. It takes a little bit of time to go ahead and, and, and cut them, uh, but it's not that much time. And once I've got them, you know, they're there. I have found that the correct way to cut these is five and three quarter wide by seven inches long. It's the perfect size and it lays flat. It's perfect. So, you know, I go to Lowe's and I buy a big roll of screen wire and I cut them out in strips, measure them out, use one for a template. We just cut 20 pan covers in a matter of two minutes. That's gonna get you through the day. Come on, bird. Load up. So we've got one coyote in the trap right here, just down the road from the camp. It's probably the best intersection on the whole farm. I can't see the other two traps. I've got a triple set right here. I'm hoping we got more than one. We'll see. Oh yeah, buddy. How about that? There's nothing better than that right there. I don't, I don't know. Uh... Oh, we've got a barker too. This is why we always set at least a double. This is one of the, one of the commandments right here. If it's good enough for one trap, it's good enough for two. If it's good enough for two, maybe it's good enough for three or four. This location, we've got three traps. We've got two coyotes. We set them yesterday. Boom. This spot right here has got more tracks than anywhere on the farm, and you can see why. Eight less feet stomping around making tracks in the mud. That's what that is. A lot of guys ask me questions on this. You know, every time I catch a coyote, I'm pretty much going to pull the set up. You can see this. He totally blew out the back of the dirt hole. So I pulled the trap, and whenever I went ahead and dispatched the coyote, it bled on the trap. Do I need to set a new trap that's clean? You can see the blood on it. And my answer to that is, you know, if you've got them, if you have the chance to be able to put a new trap in there, go ahead and pull this and take it back to the house and clean it up. Basic principle is pull the trap. And if you've got a chance, get a clean trap. You don't necessarily have to, but this one's clean. So we're gonna go ahead and pop in a new trap right there. I always try to drill that hole as deep as I can get it to. This, this auger is abnormally long, but it digs really well because of that double bevel. And dig, dig your hole as deep as you can because you're always going to have raccoons come and they're going to try to reach down in the hole and pull your sheep's wool out. It's also going to help drain the set if it rains again. We've got rain coming in another two days. So drill it as deep as you can. It's going to help the water escape it, but it's also going to keep them from digging it out. There's so many little things when you're coyote trapping or whenever you're trying to learn that you need to remember that it's sometimes it can seem a little overwhelming and I didn't I definitely didn't learn this overnight you know this is several several years and 
thousands of, tra of trap sets or experience. By far, am I not the best, but learning something new every day. It's mainly repetition as well. Muscle memory, kind of like shooting a bow. This is the one of the main reasons why I love using a pan cover. If you can see that, see how that is laying flat? There's a little bit of a bubble there, but we're gonna take that right out of it. And this is probably the most important part, mainly just because if the coyote feels your trap move, he's gonna dig it out of the ground and you're not gonna catch him. And this keeps me from having to primp the set and packing dirt in and around the jaws. If, you know, if you're using a, um, an underall or if you're trying to use um, you know, peat moss, guys spend way too much time packing dirt in and around the jaws. Set it in there, it's nice and solid, quarter to three quarters of an inch underneath the ground, that really doesn't matter. I'm using a four coal trap in this wet ground. I'm carrying my dirt, it's already pre-sifted. Build that mountain over that trap. Now that seems like a lot, but it's going right over the center of the trap. I'm gonna move this stuff out of the way. Always find your pan. And remember I told you there was a little bit of a bubble there? I'm taking that out of it right now. I'm taking sand and kind of sifting it down underneath that screen wire to let it sit on top of that pan. Bubble's gone. Grab your levers, seat it in, and pack. That trap's solid. It's not gonna move. That's, that's the simplest form of bedding a trap as you can get. Now I'll just take whatever I had, and this is the same color as the dirt around it, so we're gonna kind of disguise that really bright red soil. And I offset to the left just a little. I'll throw that on the right, keep him from stepping there. It's just like painting a picture. So this is one of the most important things when, when it comes to coyote trapping, is bedding that trap as solid as you can get it. And this is just the most efficient way that I've found to make that happen. talk about the timing of a trapping program and when you need to be there you know trappers kind of get a bad rap about you know people want to think that we just want to come out here and kill everything all the time and that's that's not the case you know we, we try to time our trapping program to basically give the turkeys and the deer a reprieve when they're trying to have the, their young and that because that's when they're the most vulnerable and we're just going to create a void within this property while those animals are trying to have their young and give them a break. Okay, this is a spot right here. I've got a double set. It's on the corner of a little pecan orchard. You know, young pines, cotton field, road that kind of intersects and makes a T right here. And this traditionally catches a coyote on the first night every night, every time I come trap it. But we're on day three now and it hasn't caught yet. And it's really easy to second guess yourself and say, well, I need to go over there and put new lure or new bait or maybe I'm doing something wrong. And the truth is a coyote just hasn't walked by it yet. You know, they, they go on a pretty good sized loop. So never, you know, don't second guess yourself. Let the, let the traps hunt. They're here, they're gonna hunt 24 seven. Don't even get out of the truck or the ranger. Keep driving, as long as that trap looks good, let them hunt.
when you start talking about coyotes and weather systems and when they move, it can get fairly complicated because they're not like deer. They're so unpredictable. You know, they may move 24 hours ahead of a front. They may move 48 hours after the front. You never really know when it's going to be. That's why we let these traps hunt for 10 days. So today, it warmed up. We only caught one coyote, but we've got a few gaps to fill. We're going to set a few more traps. We've got weather coming, so we're going to finish out this 10-day period. like a strong coffee in the morning. <laughs> Woo! Coyote filet mignon right there. And before you, you know, even think about running a trap line or buying a bunch of traps, do your research, ride along with an experienced trapper, try to find the best and most humane traps you possibly can. And when you do start trapping, use your head, be ethical, be smart, think about it before you post something on social media, and most importantly, have fun, because trapping's fun.